Howdy, AP Pre-Cal. It is Ms. Kosh, and I wanted to start um, this lesson in Desmos. So I'll come to the notes in a minute. Maybe I'll make another video. I definitely will make another video for that. But I wanted to start right here on the Desmos screen. So we're going to look through this in class, but I wanted to, to talk about this. Okay, so the first thing, we've got um, one of our parent functions for an exponential function, um, y equals 2 to the x. Um, I could come in here and change um, and change that to another function I'll change back so if it were 6 to the x it still goes it has the basic same shape and it still goes to the point um, 0 1 that's our that's what we often will call the pivot function <laughs> the pivot point of an exponential function oh my goodness um, and they all kind of these different parent functions look the same um, but they might have different degrees of steepness so here is our function um, that I'm basing all of these off of, which is um, 2 to the x. Um, the advantage of that is that I can then see the point um, uh, 1, 2 is easy to see, so that would be somewhere over here. And then the point um, 2, when you have 2 squared, it's 4, so you can see how that's on the graph. And then when I have 3, when I have an x value of 3, we end up going up to 8. Um, and so there's those points. Um, okay, so let's keep going. The the first thing we want to do is we want to see what happens when I when I change my when I have an a value out front. So if you notice, oh, you know what? You have to turn on the graph first. Let's pause that for a second. If I turn on this graph, when my a value changes, you'll notice that it's a vertical stretch. Um, and now if it's negative, there's also this reflection over the x-axis. Um, and so when we pause that for just a second, oh, okay, pause it right here. Um, what that means is we had an a value of 4, that has an intersection um, on the y-axis of 4. So we refer to that a, that a value as the um, initial amount. So when we start looking at we have this much money and it grows exponentially, that a value is the initial amount. Or if we have this many bacteria and they are growing exponentially, that was once again the initial amount or you have a half-life problem, initial amount, um, et cetera, et cetera. That's, that's the amount that you have at time zero. Okay, so let's turn that one off and keep going. The, so let's describe the transformations required to generate function g. Okay, so now function g has a negative in there in the exponent, and so what that has done is it has re, it reflected my, new, my original graph over the y-axis. So when I turn that on, it looks something like that. So that was a reflection over the y-axis, but we also know with our exponent properties that that could be written as 1 over 2 to the x, or 1 over 2 in parentheses to the x. Um, and so our b value, our growth or decay factor, that's the exact same graph. So notice as I turn that off and on, it's in the exact same spot. So we often will talk about um, We'll describe our, our exponential function as y equals a times b to the x. b is our growth or decay factor. Um, and when b is between 0 and 1, it's a decay factor. When b is bigger than 1, it's a growth factor. And this is why, because it reflected it um, over um, it reflected it over the y-axis, and now it's decaying instead of growing. Okay, let's keep going. So what happens, what did the question say? What happens in an exponential decay problem? That b value is between 0 and 1. What generalizations do we usually make? OK, I already answered that. Uh, OK, so then the next thing, it says, describe the transformations required to generate functions j and k from the parent function. Um, so j is going to take my graph, and the plus 2 tells us that we're going to shift it to the left 2. So my, my pivot point right here is going to move left to units. So we're going to have a point somewhere over here at negative 2, 1, and then we have this, we'll follow that same sort of shape. Um, so when I turn it on, let's see, oh, turn on, there we go, sure enough. Okay, so this point right here, I don't know what accessory is not supported, that was very odd, I don't really care. Um, at negative 2, we have the point 1, our pivot point has shifted to the left 2. Now, let's turn that off again, now the k function um, we have a vertical stretch, and there's a reason I wrote 2 to the 2, um, and that is, well, our vertical stretch is by a factor of 4. So our initial value, so this point right here, has now been multiplied by 4. So now our pivot point here, um, well, our, do I want to say that? 
Our initial value is now 0, 4 because of that, that we've multiplied it by 4. So when I turn that on, notice right here, I've got the point 0, 4 like I described. Um, but what we also notice is that those two graphs are exactly the same. Okay, so the pivot point for, um, well, for that one, yeah, it is the, it is the pivot point. So we, the k equation was uh, multiplied by a factor of 4, so the pivot point went from 0, 1 to now 0, 4. Um, this one, we would have different, we would describe the pivot points differently between these two graphs, but they're exactly the same graph. Okay, and so what we're, the conclusion that we're drawing is that, um, that we can take an exponential function and we can describe its transformations, not everyone all the time, but sometimes our, our horizontal, um, our shifts left and right can be described, at, described as, um, as vertical dilations. Okay, so... Um, which is kind of cool, but because of the properties of exponents, when we start playing with these functions, um, yeah, we can take a, a, a vertical dilation and write it as a horizontal translation, which is really fun. We're going to go on to the notes and see if we can make this make more sense. All right, go practice.